Hi everyone, welcome to the Sports Editor. We've had a chat to Ireland cricketer Shane Gatekate. Shane's done really well for himself in the sense that he's represented Ireland T20 cricket, white ball cricket, and is aiming to represent the Test team as well. Shane has had to work hard to get where he is right now and has faced a number of challenges which you'll obviously hear in the interview a bit later. But Shane is a determined man and is really loves the game and is doing well for cricket in Ireland and has also started his own coaching program called SG Coaching. Enjoy the interview. Thanks for your support. Shane, first question. With regards to your career, was the fact that your dad obviously was very competitive in cricket and did you enjoy that competitive side and did that help you create a love for the game and help you decide that's it, cricket is the sport you want to pursue? Yeah, I think my dad has always he's helped me out since I've been a kid really in the back garden, always throwing balls to me. Um, after a long day of work but I think it always also came down to um, just growing up in South Africa I think, you know playing cricket and rugby and I went to DPHS until I was in grade six um, very competitive school and you know sports driven school um, and then to add to that my dad's uh, my grandfather I never met him but he also played for Natal I think he played five or six, six games against it for Natal he actually played against Australia in a, in a warm-up game his name's Robert Getkate he was an off spinner but I actually never met him, but I think it was just a combination of um, all those things, really. You've played in three unannounced World Cups. Has all that experience contributed to where you are now? And is the competition a great base for youngsters to prove themselves? The three unannounced World Cups were great experiences. Uh, 2008, 2010 and 2012, I think. 2008, I picked up an injury and also, I was also very young. Brina Rock, coach at the time, brought me over. As as more of a youngster, really, and that was a great. That was my first taste of proper international cricket, um, which was a great experience. You know, playing against the likes of uh, Stephen Finn, Chris Wokes, and some of the big names. And then 2010, we went to New Zealand. We actually had a, a really strong side. We got to the plate final against Bangladesh, so we did well. Although we didn't we didn't get through the group stage, I think to get to the plate final and play against Bangladesh, a really tough opposition was. You know, I learned a lot there, definitely. I think back then I was more bowler, so I didn't really contribute with the bat as much as I wanted to, but it was, yeah, great experience. In 2012, we went to uh, Australia, Townsville. We had quite a young side, a couple of four or five experienced players. But no, definitely those three World Cups kind of set down a base for me to, and a bit of a taste of international cricket. And obviously I wanted a lot more um, moving forward. Ireland beating England in the 2011 World Cup must have encouraged you to pursue the dream of playing for your country. How special are moments like that for you? Yeah, unbelievable day watching watching Ireland play on TV. St. Patrick's Day, I was in Dublin, so it was obviously everyone was quite festive, and to see the guys beat England and show show much so much team spirit, and for Kev to Kevin O'Brien to score 100 like he did, I think it inspired a lot of a lot of players and a lot of kids over in Ireland across the whole of Ireland, really. So. I think yeah, that was for it to be done on Sky Sports in a World Cup. You don't you don't really get too much better than that. The, the guys beat Pakistan in 2011, but I think to back it up again and and on a world stage in a World Cup like it, like they did against England, um, you know, in, in foreign conditions for us, I think yeah, you know, it was a special moment and, and definitely inspired a lot of cricketers. You have been playing 2020 cricket for Ireland since 2018. Has that format of the game helped draw more attention for the people to come and support cricket in Ireland? Yeah, I've enjoyed my T20 cricket. It's a it's a great way into international cricket. I think you can, you know, have a couple of cameos here and then and make a real impact in the field. Maybe your fielding or your bowling. So I think, you know, it, it's given a taste to young cricketers to know that if they do well in domestic cricket. And, and club level, there is a, a pathway there, and there's opportunities there. We have quite a young side at the moment, so you know, if if you're a T20 specialist or you you know you do something different, um, there's definitely opportunities there. So I think, yeah, t- crowd wise, I think we definitely get bigger crowds at the T20 games. We have a lot of domestic T20 festivals, and I think um, Cricket Island have done really well to set those up, and the provincial unions have set those up really well. So I think we have that, and then. A lot of T20 cricket, hopefully, in the future to draw in more crowds. I think, yeah, this can only be a positive moving forward. In 2020 cricket, 
which bowl has been a challenge for you to face? And do you enjoy the pace at which the format is played at? I think Rashid Khan is definitely probably the toughest bowler, you know, I've faced and it was obviously a big challenge, you know, he's bowling 100Ks now, turning the ball both ways. Um, I've seen a lot of him on TV, but it's a different different kettle of fish when you're out there in the middle, you know, on TV and you're, you know, you're under pressure and he's, where I bat is, where I bat is in the, the lower order and he bowls his four overs in the last 10. So it's very challenging when you need 10, 12 and over. You're trying to pick him, you're trying to score, score that boundary. So it is a challenge, you know, you're under pressure as it is. Um, so he's been probably the biggest challenge so far, but a great experience. Um, he's got me out a couple of times. So I'm trying to learn learn from facing him because it's obviously hard to replicate in, in training. Um, just trying to get on the Merlin machine as much as I can to try make it really challenging in cricket because when you do, we do play Afghanistan quite a lot, so it is a challenge. But you want to be playing against the, the world's best, I suppose, to really test yourself. Being an all-rounder, your bowling average is 18.74 in 2020 cricket and a strike rate of 119.45. Which category do you fall in, batting or bowling all-rounder? Yeah, it's a tough one because T20 cricket is, you know, you can make an impact with maybe just bowling one over at the death and going for five or six. And the same with the bat, you can come in and get maybe 10 off two or three balls. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if stats is everything in T20 cricket. I think I'd like my strike rate a little bit a little bit higher overall. I think in some games it's been generally quite good. With the ball, I've, my role is, you know, middle overs to the death, you know, with change-ups and Yorkers. Um, so I've enjoyed, I enjoy being quite flexible. And I think the more I play, I'm learning, you know, in T20 cricket, and there's so many different situations you can come in and, you know, one, two, one or two balls here and there can change your, your, the momentum of the game and you've, you've got to adapt and change your game plan. So I think I do see myself more as maybe a batting, a batting all-rounder, but I like to co- contribute with both. And even in the field, I think in T20 cricket, you, you, can have an, you can make an impact on the game in so many different ways. So it's just trying to work on all those three aspects as, as, as much as you can and get the balance with trying to contribute as much as you can in, in a short space of time. You also represented Ireland A and played against Namibia recently. Is a team in need of more fixtures like that to get where they want to go? Seven, yeah, it was a great trip down to Pretoria uh, against Namibia. We had five T20s and, and three uh, 50 over games, two 50 over games, and one one friendly 50 over game. So, no, that was a great trip. I think, yeah, we had in 2019, start of the year, we went to Sri Lanka for a full month, you know, and that was playing in these different conditions, especially. I don't know. We've got a mixture of some some young guys and some older guys, and some guys who just need cricket coming back from injury. So yeah, the more fixtures we can have, the better. It's obviously financially quite tough, but I think you know cricket Island are trying their best to to get as many of these fixtures as possible. As they've seen the the rewards. You know, Sri Lanka last year in, in January after that tour, you know, three, four, five guys made their international debuts in the in the, in the next two months after that. So I think you know different conditions home and away playing for Ireland Lay I think is it's it's a great it's a great base and it's a great aspect of the game where you can a great way and I suppose into the senior team I think if you do well for domestic cricket then you're doing well for Ireland Lay you know you're hopefully knocking down the door and you your opportunities will be um sooner rather than later making your ODI debut in 2019 versus Zimbabwe was a good series for you is it a case where the more Ireland plays the better they will get as there is a lot to absorb for the team. Yeah, making my ODI debut was a special day up in Breedy. It was last July. I was yeah, I played a few T20 games, but I think I really enjoyed the responsibility and the responsibility of being the fourth, third, fourth seamer and and having to bowl your ten overs and batting seven. You know, in T20 cricket, some days you you might not be called upon, but I think in ODI cricket you've got that added responsibility, and I really enjoyed my role there and being able to contribute um, in most of the games and to win 3-0 in the series against Zimbabwe, who are a good side uh, with some experienced players, you know, the likes of Brendan Taylor, um, Craig Irvine, um, Carl Jarvis and, and the likes, you know, Sakanda Raza. I think it was, you know, it was a great series. And I think this year, funny enough, we, we would have had a lot of cricket, you know, New Zealand, Pakistan, Bangladesh uh, were some of the teams that were meant to come over. And obviously now with, with the coronavirus, it's obviously changed things. But I think, you know, that there is a there, is, there are fixtures in place. And I think the more we can play play against these high-level teams, we're going to learn um, 
and the more wins we can get, I suppose, as a team, it's going to help us and give us confidence moving forward. Consistency seems to ooze through you. Is that purely why you're able to be successful in bowling and the batting department? Yeah, I think I just, when I'm playing my best cricket, I think, you know, I'm training hard, I'm going through my processes, I'm being really specific in, with my training, will it be with the bat, the ball, or the field? And just trying to give myself the best chance um, when I do go into the pitch mentally, uh, having my plans ready. And, you know, when I am playing my best in cricket, I'm not really worried too much about the outcome. I know that I've got all these steps in place, um, stick to my routines and a few things that help me that I know I, I can give myself the best chance of performing. And if I can do stick to my process and my routines as much as I can, I think that gives me a chance of doing better. And that's when I do put in consistent performances back to back. Um, but it's, it's a can you know, you, you just got to take the highs with the lows. And if you do have a bit of a low period, it's about not getting too down, down about it. if you do have a, you know, if you are in good form, it's not, not looking too far ahead. I think it's just prepping for each game as best you can and, and taking yeah one day at a time. You were born with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, a condition that can lead to periods of rapid heart rate. Has this created a deeper appreciation for where you are now? Is it motivation to others to pursue their goals despite? Yeah, I was born with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Obviously, growing up, it was never really an issue until I was 19. And, you know, that day in Birmingham, playing for the under-19s, bowled my six overs and came off the pitch. And normally, over the years, that that would happen, but that I'd normally put an ice pack in my neck to slow slow my heart rate down, and that day it was obviously very hot, and and that didn't seem to work, and I, I kind of fainted and passed out on the side of the pitch next to my coach Gary Steer, and woke up two days let, later next to William Porterfield and Boyd Rankin, you know, and they kind of told me what happened. So it was a very lucky day. Um, the paramedics, you know, were there with a, within a flash, and they saved my life completely. So it was a day I'll, I'll never forget. Um, definitely puts things in perspective and, and, and makes you grateful. Um, you know, people say to me, "Was it a setback?" And how did you come back from that? You know, I think they did. The hospital have done. They've done surgery and they've taken away the problem. So yeah, okay, I was in hospital for a month and I missed a bit of cricket. But I mean, it's actually it's kind of spurred me on and it's, it's helped my cricket. If, if anything, you know, I think a setback would be, you know, a, a proper injury and being out for the game for a year or two or, um, you know, there's there's definitely worse things out there. I think I was actually very lucky. I was only out for, you know, I was in the hospital for a month and then um, um, uh, two weeks out of the hospital, I was back playing with the Irish 19s and, and a World Cup qualifier and it actually helped me do well in that tournament. Um, I got some runs and wickets and I think, yeah, it def definitely made me appreciate things more. And, and to be able to pass on the story and talk about it, I think, is is important. Um, so when I do face tougher times now within life or cricket, I try and try and look back on, on that day to kind of put things in, into perspective. Cricket Island Premier League, Northern Knights. How is the club doing and is the league drawing more and more cricketers to it? So we have our domestic league, which is club cricket. We would have eight in the Premier League, and I play for Estonians Cricket Club, which are we've got quite a young side at the moment. We have Andrew White, you know, ex international Irish cricketer, um, current Irish selector, um, chairman of selectors. Sorry. So yeah, no, the club cricket is we play a lot of white ball cricket, T20s, 50 overs, um, and we play in the All Ireland competition as well. So there's a lot of club cricket there. It's actually very busy. Then we have our domestic league. We, I play for the Northern Knights. In the first class and list day in T20 um, games, then we have the Northwest Warriors, we have Leinster Lightning and the Munster Reds. So that's obviously a step up. So if you do well for club cricket, you make the step up to you know list day in first class cricket. So there's a clear pathway there. And if you do well for them, you you go into play for the Wolves and hopefully the Irish team. But I think it, it's drawing in you know a lot of guys from overseas. They wanted to come over. Uh, the club, the club is club structure is very prof uh, professional, not professional. It's very competitive. Sorry, very competitive, and you know, there's actually a, a lot in most games. There's a lot of rivals between the clubs. Play in a good spirit, but you know, it's qu it's quite aggressive cricket, and I think you know, there's a lot of journalists and there's a lot of hype over each game over Twitter. There's a lot of yeah, I think the league's promoted pretty well. I think so. I think yeah, there's more people. More overseas professionals are definitely drawn to coming to play um, in these fixtures. 
how has your dealing been with Futura Sports Agency? Yeah, Futura Sports have been brilliant from the from the day I've joined them. You know, I know Craig Yelton quite well. He's he did some coaching over here and just having a few conversations with him and he obviously works with Futura Sports. He's one of the coaches and he spoke about Paddy Statler and the work he does uh, with with cricketers around the world. So I thought, you know, this is something I wanted to be a part of. Part of and having a few initial chats with, with Paddy and he always said, you know, he's going to try try his best to to get me into certain teams here and there and try help me contract wise and get me into tournaments. But I think it's it's about it's he's he's massive on the relationship between the player and and himself. And I think that's that kind of suited me quite well. You know, it's I don't want to just be emailing someone the whole time. It's kind of the engagement and the communication over text and phone calls. I think he's been brilliant. So he's more than just a cricket agent. He's actually a bit of a you know he's a mate. He's a mentor, and he's he's able to help me now with. Um, my, my coaching side of things, you know, I'm able to bounce some ideas off. So I think the whole agency as, as itself, it's 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 second to none really. And yeah, I've enjoyed enjoyed my time in, in the last uh, nine to ten months being with them. And I think hopefully it will continue for a, a good long period, definitely. Test cricket, what is in the cards for you? I think it's. You know, it's obviously a dream. Everyone wants to play Test cricket. I think I've played my T twenty. I played T twenty now. I played ODI cricket. To be able to say I've played all three formats at the top level is 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 a, would be unbelievable. I think you know to play Test cricket that's the ultimate test, physically and, and mentally wise. So, I think it is tricky because we only have four first class games a year. With domestic domestically, we might play one or two more with the Wolves, and then Test cricket. You know, there's only one or two test matches a year, but hopefully in, in, in a few years' time, where you know there's more and more test cricket, drawing and more kids wanting to play. And no, that's definitely a dream. I'd love to. I've tested myself at T20 and ODI cricket. I'd love to keep you know just keep doing well in domestic cricket, do well at ODI at ODI level, and then hopefully that takes care of itself. Hopefully, if I'm putting in performances, hopefully that dream of playing test cricket would will will become a reality. You know. Watching the guys at Lords last year on TV, you know Tim Rudd again, the Fifer, um, proper us properly ch- challenging um, England in the home of cricket was very inspiring. And I think, you know, a bit of an eye opener to think, yeah, if you keep if you keep putting in the hard yards, you can you can be a part of those those days in Irish in Irish history. <laughs>